Um, I'm Bennett Law, one of the library trustees here. Hi, Bennett. And we've been doing this every month since January. I think next month is actually the last one of this session yeah. in May. I think we did one in December, actually. Yeah, we might have done one in December, Sorry. too, before we get going. Yep, so today we have our Senator Dick McCormick and Kirk White, our representative here. Our other senators are off meeting with other constituents this morning. Um, I think I want to mix stuff up a little bit because of all the folks here. Last time we just had Kirk, so we're all right. up to speed on workforce development, <laughs> unless there's been some major development there. But folks are here, I'm guessing they have things they want to talk about. So do you want to start with questions from the folks? How, how do you want to do that? Yeah, that would be good. Questions and comments. Doesn't even have to be a question. All right. Just jump in. We'll shut up and listen. Well, I just come because I like to know what y'all are doing. I don't really have any questions. I read a lot, so. That's a loaded question, you know, because you ask them what they're doing, and an hour and 45 minutes later, we're going, wait, we had a question. <laughs> so, no, I, so. Call the question. I'll just sit here and put that down. Sir, Mr. Eddie. Um, I, I'll start with comments. <clears throat> While I enjoy hearing what you guys are doing, um, I would... I would feel better if you, some way you could say, okay, 10 minutes, and I'm done. Because it seems like every time I've come, at 9 o'clock, there's still questions. And sometimes it seems to take a while for folks to get out of their cocoon and say, all right, I'm ready to ask a question. But the sooner we start that asking questions, the either. sooner, or the more likely, in my opinion, Excuse come me. on in. Excuse me. Uh, more likely we'll get to more of those questions. So I don't know what that time period is, but if you if you could, the, right. however many are coming, get to. It's kind of hard to break the ice, and then once we do an hour <laughs> in, then we all leave with questions still. Yeah. Like, uh, we have we have gotten many comments that we spoke to all. So I, I take so, that to heart. I have a question. So, I'm sorry, so there's some chairs around the corner. Right. Grab okay. one and we'll, we'll make space yeah. here, I promise. Um, S5. Mm -hmm. The D Act. Yep. Uh, I'm obviously not into it as much as you folks are, but the way I read it, it may be affordable for those who are more affluent than me. I don't see it being affordable. For no, you're middle income folks. And the two year hiatus, or whatever you want to call it, about looking into it, uh, the way I read what I read is uh, that's just a, okay, we're going to hope this dies down and we're still going to pass this thing. So hopefully you could, when you, when you get time comes, you could. Give me some hope that that's not what's going to happen. That we are really going to look at this over the next two years. We're going to look at what it's going to cost people who are in the middle income to lower income who can't afford uh, solar panels, who are going against uh, municipalities that are zoning uh, solar panels out of their region or other kinds of alternative energy. So, I mean, anyway, I think we've got the cart out in front of the horse. I don't want to destroy our climate any more than anybody else for my children, grandchildren. But I think we really need to look harder at, as an electrician, uh, batteries. I don't think we've got, I don't think we've got the right battery yet. We don't. I think there's uh, there's some awful smart scientists out there, and they may need to either prodding or maybe even some uh, assistance financially or whatever might need to. Okay, let's 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 figure this out. I, I you're bombarded by on the television with electric cars, electric electric trucks, electric 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 electric, mm. um, and. Being an electrician, I'm not sure we're quite ready to do that. Not, not, not even by 2050, unless there's a whole, whole lot of changes. 
And I don't see those changes, changes on the horizon. Um, I'm on, I'm on the on committee, so, okay, so I'll, I'll, I'll grab this one. Um, first of all, let me say I will personally guarantee that we will be completely carbon free by 2050. When? Because 2050. Because if we're not, I'll, I'll be 103. I won't have to answer. <laughs> uh, <laughs> although you never know, that they're, they're making tremendous advances these days. Um, so you can give us as many guarantees you know you want. Right? <laughs> I, uh, we had just talked about that we talked too long. Dave, you've raised, the issue you raised has several, many different aspects to it. So I, I apologize. I am going to be talking for a while on this because there's a lot that needs to I need to say. The first of all, we start with the assumption, with the understanding, that that global warming is is a transcendently uh, pressing problem. In other words, it's just it's overarches everything else, and it's um, nothing else really matters if we don't take care of that. Uh, and we are way behind. I think I've said this to you, this group before. Um, Jimmy Carter in 1979 said we can start now and do this gradually and relatively painlessly. Or we can wait 30 years and we'll have a crisis. So now it's 42 years and 43 years. Um, The cleaner forms of energy, solar panels, uh, windmills, and so on, um, the sun doesn't always shine. The wind doesn't always blow. And if we're going to use cleaner forms of energy, we have to have better ways of storing it, which we do not have at this point. But it's, it's the, another problem with batteries is um, uh, the way in which the materials are accessed. I mean, and, and, and um, uh, cobalt and, and uh, such. It's it in Africa. There is literally slave labor, child labor, uh, getting this stuff. So <clears throat> we have problems with batteries that that we have to address. I don't think Little Vermont is going to do that, but we are operating on the recognition that that is a priority, and then and nationally, and then that. None of this will work unless batteries are, are ultimately improved. Um, clean energy is, and now I'm moving towards S5. Clean energy is uh, not only cleaner, it's, it's cheaper. It is less expensive to use solar panels. It is less expensive to use um, an electric car to use wind. People generally private, don't use private wind on their own yards, although some might. But certainly the, the greener energy is cheaper. It's expensive to get into. And that's where you were, Dave, when you were saying electric cars might be a good idea, but not everyone can afford them. And the argument that's being made against S5 is one that, that it's an elitist argument. It's and people will call me very indignantly. I can't afford an electric car. Um, I'm driving a, a hybrid because I got a real bargain from my stepson. I don't know if I could afford it otherwise. Um, the um, whole idea of S5 and the previous session where we had the, the, the Clean Heat Act, the whole idea is to make it easier and more affordable <coughs> for people to get into the more, uh, the cleaner and ultimately cheaper energy. Uh, and it is very frustrating for me when people kind of, you know, and I appreciate, Dave, you just now did not scold scold us, and I appreciate that. That's coming later. Oh, okay. <laughs> <laughs> well, <laughs> but often it's, it's a real scolding. It's, it's a real scolding as well. What, you're not listening to the people. You don't care about the real people, and so on. And, and the fact is, uh, what, what they're thinking is that because um, electric, the electric alternative, is more expensive to get into in the first place, then it follows that 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 we are being insensitive to that expense. And in fact, the whole idea here is to is to address the expense and try to try to make it easier. 
Um, we had a bill similar to this in the previous legislative session. Um, the governor uh, vetoed it. The Senate overrode the governor's veto. The House missed that by one vote. Um, of course, anyone who voted against it was that one vote, but we all blame it on one particular Windsor County guy who has moved away. <laughs> I don't think that's why he moved away. Um, in any case, this bill it was a, a largely a response to the negative attitudes about the, the previous bill. And uh, as far as the, the, the delay, I uh, actually, I, I serve on the Natural Resources and Energy Committee in the Senate, so I oppose that delay. Um, my sense is, um, <coughs> being a state senator, I thought I should avoid certain indelicate expressions. So the way I put it in committee was there comes a time to use the plumbing facility for its intended purpose or to vacate it. <laughs> uh, I'll explain to you later what I'm referring to. Oh, okay. <laughs> it just wasn't that funny. Um, in any case, uh, this was... This is an assurance to people who worry that we're that we're rushing. I don't think we're rushing into this. I I start the clock in 1979, and so I don't think we're rushing. But even there is that that this is this bill this year is a reworking of a bill from um, started three years ago. So, Dick, if it's intended to address the cost mm -hmm. concerns, how does it do that specifically? Like how? If I want to put in a solar installation, mm -hmm. are you going to give me money to do that? Because I'll sign up today. Yep. <laughs> no, you, get, you get tax, you get tax uh, um, ramifications for that. And do you know how much it costs? No, what, no, yeah, no. How do you know how expensive it is? Yeah. I've, I've, I've had quotes. I, I was, five years ago, I was ready to sign on until, you know, okay. You gotta, you gotta put thirty grand up front. Mm -hmm. right. mm. Right. Well, it's gonna take you fifteen for less years to get that money back. I just got a, I just got a quote for less than that. Um, well, I'm sorry. Where do you live? You live where the sun shines. I <laughs> hope most of us do. I would have to cut the forest down yeah. to get the sun to work on my property, and. God help you. You're not going to do that. There are um, a variety. Of, first of all, let me point out that this this bill itself doesn't do anything. It hands, and again, that's a, a, if I have any uh, opposition to S five, it's, it's that it doesn't do enough and it doesn't do it fast enough. But um, and it has other problems. It's, it's very tolerant of some kinds of fuels that I don't think count as green. But we wouldn't. Have, Politics is an imperfect uh, activity, and you're looking for an agreement among people who don't necessarily agree. And so there are times when you don't ask, do I think this is good? It's, can I live with this? Um, I voted against many of the provisions in the bill, and then when the time came for the bill, I voted for, for the whole bill. The idea is, I made my, my arguments, my colleagues did not find me persuasive. This is as good as I'm gonna get. But in any case, uh, what, what, what can actually be done? There are, uh, we are handing the job off to the Public Utilities Commission to actually put the specifics of the program together. Okay, so that we, and that's sort of, you go back to, to high school, we, we pass policy. We know what, what we want the law to be, we know what we want the policy to be, and then the bureaucrats actually implement it. Uh, and that's the, really the way it's supposed to be because they're the experts. We don't let them write the law because no one elected them. But um, uh, I sit here with people like you. The Public Utilities Commission does not. But they do sit there with their nerdy books. <laughs> and they, they know how, that they're the experts. <coughs> to a certain extent, the bureaucracy tells the legislature what it is we should tell them. Uh, but to give a general idea of where this will be going, there are, for example, ways of financing the startup costs, in which, when I said it's cheaper to run, it's expensive to get into, but it's cheaper to run, you can calculate those savings and the monthly payments on the loan 
can be connect can be set up so as to equal the savings, so that there's no additional cost. You do that, for example, with home electricity, and that can work as well by getting in on community. There are I live in a wooded northern slope. There's no way I can use solar, um, but Cindy and I are looking at community, so which is to say that there is pro a privately owned solar collection field, and you arrange that. You're getting your electricity from there. And um, that's that's one kind of, kind of way is, 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 the, is the credit. Um, tax ramifications. I'm sorry not to be giving you more details, but I think we're doing it right that way because we're not rushing. We're, at, we're handing it off to people who know how to put it together. Um, I'm trying to think if I've forgotten anything. I promise not to talk too much. I, th I think that's... that's So did that's you hear the delay that was mentioned? Yeah. It's just that this isn't going to go in this biennium. That's right. We're going to spend two years Have the educating the public, advocating well, the also public, or doing two, what? Two years of the Public Utilities Commission putting <laughs> the details together. So that you have more specifics to show yeah. people yeah. to build support or not. Yeah, the bill would pass and the bill would give them. Right. Uh, it, but the, but but it, if the bill passes, mm -hmm. it gives a two year. Yes. Yeah. Oh, so it's yeah. not it's not two years till the bill passes. So you're not delaying passing the bill. Yeah. You're just saying you have a two year implementation period. To there will be another process. bill in two yeah. years. It will have to come back. Yeah. To yes. Be another bill. There'll be another bill. Yeah. yeah. And um, I think I've I've, I've addressed. If there's mm -hmm. more on that. Can I ask a quick question about solar panels in yeah. particular? Um, I knew that at one point there was concerns about what was going to happen to those solar mm -hmm. panels when they aged out, and there wasn't a plan, a technology for that. And I'm wondering if they're working on that, and if that would be part of the bill moving forward to fund that kind of um, research into that technology. Um, it's actually two different questions. Okay. Uh, well, Fair the, the ubiquitous they. Are they working on that yet? The, the okay. utilities. Yes. I guess the public uh, yeah. Utilities yeah. Who uh, it's, that's not in, in this bill. I don't okay. think it is. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. And right now, that bill is in the House. So it's in the House uh, Environment and Energy Committee. It's passed out of the Senate, and they are they're sort of starting from scratch. They're they're trying. They're basically dismantling the whole bill, taking you know, talking to different people, all trying to get a sense of. You know what parts they think work or don't work, so it might be a different bill when it comes out, or it might be the same bill. Uh, but if you have those concerns, energy and uh, uh, energy and environment is the committee. Yeah. Um, and uh, can we meet at four four o'clock on Saturday afternoon, so uh, I can be there? Mm -hmm. Can we meet at four o'clock on Saturday afternoon so I can be there? <laughs> <laughs> no, probably not. Oh. But, but you could. Uh, uh, <clears throat> I can't remember who's the, who's the chair of that committee now. Uh, it was Tim Brigland, but he's gone. He, I've seen yeah, a lot Amy, of things that I would like to Amy? attend, but the it meetings are Amy, at uh, 1 o'clock yeah. on yeah, Thursday afternoon Sheldon. or yeah. 10 o'clock Tuesday morning, yeah. times when I got to go make money so that I can yeah. pay my electric bill. <laughs> <Yeah. laughs> but you can certainly email or call. Um, since COVID, we we. We basically did, we did, the legislature ran on Zoom. And since we had it all set up anyway, and people seemed to like it, one of the um, benefits of, of that, all that, was that, that the public can watch. All, all our committee hearings now are, are on Zoom. You can get them, and they are recorded. Recording. So you can, you can watch them. Right. Uh, I don't have the, um, the phone number in my head. It's easy to find this. First of all, I am not, um, I think there are people who are stupidly delighted with computers. Um, I recognize that they do wonderful things and I live, I live on a computer. I am not, I am willing to say things like, the computer didn't work. And people say, oh, it always works. You must have messed up. No, no, actually, actually, the computer didn't work. Exactly what I told her. <laughs> but, but in any case, uh, I'm an I'm an enthusiast for the Vermont Legislature's website, and because it really you just follow the codes. 
Just Google Vermont Legislature, you'll get the website, and just you, you read the prompts. You can find your way to. Yeah. Yep. The other thing is, if you just go onto YouTube and search uh, in you know, uh, Vermont House, Vermont Senate, uh, it'll it'll pop up. You'll get the whole array. All of, of those committees <coughs> get posted to YouTube. What's that? All those committee hearings get posted. To I don't know. Do they all? I think. Well. I think. I think. Uh, uh, I think right certainly the uh, certainly yeah. the floor sessions. I don't know if yeah. the committee sessions are some, not some committee archived. Some. Yeah. yeah. So go go ahead, Jean. Sorry. Well, I, was, I was just going to comment. Uh, some of us have left confidence in the quote experts at the Public Utilities Commission uh, than others. Uh, based on past experience, especially in light of, uh, of being beholden to the industry in terms of climate uh, change and the inf uh, what I would call an inordinate influence of Vermont gas, uh, the electric utilities, etc upon the Public Utilities Commission uh, that some of their prior decisions have not been as sensitive, A, to climate issues, or B, to uh, middle, low-income, uh, marginalized populations, et cetera. Uh, so I just, that's, that's a comment. and. Uh, I would be happier if there were more direction to the Public Utilities Commission to take into consideration uh, public hearings, uh, input from uh, interested parties, vested parties, consumers, etc. Mm -hmm. But that's your, your no response necessary. Oh, sorry. I, I do want to say I, I, I don't I don't blow that off, and I voted for the bill. But uh, again, my my question to myself before voting is not do I love this bill? It's can I live with this? I, I, I okay. I think that. I think your your comments, Gene, are actually have really have merit, and and I I struggle in my own dealings with the commission. Okay. I just another link in this chain that um, kind of segues into what Dave's been talking about. But um, I have a friend who's a salesman for a solar installation company down in the Upper Valley, and he's got all kinds of work lined up um, going a year in advance. People are ready to go, designed, ready to install. No electricians. There are no electricians available anywhere. And, uh, so and <clears throat> training-wise, who wants, what electrician wants to be a master electrician, and what master electrician wants to go and teach, you know, and, and get a fraction of the income that they would have as a teacher? So there's like a huge barrier there to uh, going ahead with any kind of massive, um, you know, program of installing all these systems. There's, um, and so that this falls into my committee, um, and uh, and so workforce development is uh, is across the board. I mean, yeah, it's not just electricians, it's plumbers, it's everybody. Tra um, trades are uh, trades, tra and trouble. so um, so there there have been. You know, I mean, some of it is, of course, finding and incentivizing people that want to teach in those programs, as you as you mentioned, <coughs> because. Um, in uh, a lot of these kind of programs, even you know, they have more people applying for the programs than they have capacity to right. teach them. Um, and so, you know, uh, as in my committee, we've we've been look we looked spent a lot of time looking at where are all those pinch points along there. Uh, you know, do they have? Uh, and then you know, do, do they have enough instructors? Do they have enough? Uh, you know. Um, uh, you know, the things they need for the coursework pieces and the lab work pieces without, you know, all that stuff. And, and so uh, we've been uh, putting in place uh, funding for the, certainly for VTC, uh, and there you know, to help them, uh, you know, get, get, their, get their programs uh, evened out. We've been looking at 
uh, things like uh, forgivable loans for a variety of professions, especially technical educations, uh, where we're basically, you know, because you know, who wants to spend all that money, right? And then, and then again, go pay in a, you know, work in a low paid teaching job. Um, and so forgivable loans, where every year that you, uh, that, the, that the state pays for your tuition, uh, you basically have to agree to stay in the state. Uh, if you stay that year, then that one year, then one year's tuition gets paid off, and you stay two years. And then especially we're, we're applying that in the nursing field, especially because, because uh, you yeah, know, and, and if you get people young enough, right, you know, if they've stayed two or three or four years, they're likely settled. And, uh, and so that's uh, the goal. But it is, no, it's a, it's a problem with, with uh, every, every level. Uh, and who was I, who were we just talking to? Uh, I'm trying to remember which, uh, again, it was, a, it was a workforce issue, but, uh, you yeah, know, uh, was it, oh, it was actually, it was, uh, my committee's been uh, talking to uh, body repair places. Um, and, uh, you know, the fees that the insurance will pay them basically have not changed in 20, 30 years. Uh, the insurance companies just say, we're going to give you this much, and uh, it's prevailing wage. Well, why is it or prevailing cost to fix it? Why is it prevailing cost? Because that's what we say it is, uh, right? Yeah. And so, uh, and so what they're having trouble, same kind of thing. They can't get anyone to even be an auto body person, in part because right now, given what they get from insurance, they can hmm. they can pay someone about $16 an hour, and they're like, McDonald's is paying $17 oh, an yeah. hour. And McDonald's could actually offer them, like, you know, uh, health benefits. Uh, and so so it's a problem across the board. How do you uh, get How do you get young people interested in working? Yeah. And what's the, you know, how does that happen? How do you, how do, you do that? Yeah. I mean, I have grandchildren that I could put my foot somewhere and you just kind of go, what is your problem? There's so many things available to you. Get with it. Yeah. And they're running on 28, 29 years of age. Yeah, I can tell you the answer that I've seen in my trade is that I've had young people work for me and they want to make what I make yes. and do what I yes. do mm -hmm. day one. Yes. Yeah. yes. Okay, I went through 15 years of gaining and four years of school and two years. Yeah. Election is two years after you've done school before you can yeah. get, apply for a mass license. Six years mm. to get where I am. And these 19, 20 year olds that come out of school, I want to make that money. I want to make it now. And I don't want to use that hand shovel down in the ditch. Yeah. Mm. I don't know if the legislature can do anything. No, I'm just, I'm, I'm trying. But do you go into schools? Do you go into schools and and and, well, and, so and sell nothing. this? So, I'll be right back. Uh, the the legislature that uh, it, and this originated in the House. So the House Commerce and Economic Development Committee uh, uh, last se session started to dig into the career and tech education uh, <coughs> programs, so the tech center, yes, right. uh, but uh, certainly at the high school level, but even at the adult level, because there are a lot of people who are kind of like, you know, yeah, yeah. Yeah. Uh, they, they had no plan when they got out of high school, now they are thinking, maybe I do want a career. Um, and um, and it's a nightmare, is what it is. It's it's cobbled together. There's there's you know several different types of tech schools. Some are associated with, with schools, and mm -hmm. some are independent, and some are and and they get their funding in different ways. And you know, and so the adults get some Fed money, and the kids get, of course, the money comes through the school system. So that so that the schools don't want to send their kids to the tech centers because then. They, they lose some of the money that follows the kid to the tech center. So there are some schools that are setting up their own shop classes, again, basically uh, to circumvent sending their kids to the tech centers. The tech centers don't coordinate their schedules with the school schedules. So the tech centers have different vacation should, schedules yeah. than the local schools or day schedules. And so it's a mess. And so we, we, we actually we commissioned a, a, a study uh, hired a, a professionals to go around around the state, talking to all the tech centers, go to all the communities, and just talk to people, and try and gather what's wrong with the system. 
um, you know, and and and, uh, and then look at what some other states and how they're organized and stuff like that. They just published the 74-page report uh, last week, and uh, it, uh, there was an article about it in VT Digger, uh, I think, this morning. Uh, um, and uh, so uh, it, it starts to identify what some of those problems are, and we're uh, and so we'll be. We'll be digging into those. Uh, one thing it proposes is to uh, separate the money from the, the schools. Basically, the ed fund would directly fund the, the tech centers rather than it going through the towns. Um, another proposal was perhaps actually, instead of having all 14 of them operating under their own plans, uh, you know, uh, maybe centralizing a regional sort of thing that coordinates all that, um, either regional or statewide. They, they, they threw out a few different, some states do it one way, some states do it a different way. Uh, but, you know, to start really looking into all that right. and, and parse it out because, because, you know, again, right, you know, the kids that aren't getting a great tech education, right. the right. kids don't know tech is an option. In some places, um, one thing they found was that a tech center that is in a school you know, like the Randolph Tech Center. Mm -hmm. Randolph kids go to the Tech Center, mm -hmm. but you know, but if you're, but if you <coughs> lived in Pittsfield, uh, wherever, <laughs> wherever, you know, you're a lot, a lot less likely to go. Yeah. Um, and uh, uh, and then you know, and uh, even last year, my committee went on. Uh, uh, we actually went and visited some tech centers as we were starting to look at this. And and one of the tech centers, uh, we've talked to a construction program, and they said, well, the problem is, is you know, the, the, the kids get here, you know, they go to their school, they get on, then they get on the bus, they come to the tech center. So they get here by like 9.30. By the time we get the kids organized, it's 10 o'clock. It's a half day program. So they work for two hours, then they have to clean up everything, then we get them back on the bus and send them back. They're like, two hours is not really enough to learn anything, yeah. especially if you know, you're a teenager. And Kirk, are they? Um, is anyone doing anything to incentivize women in the trades? I mean, I'm familiar with Vermont Works for Women, a, a nonprofit yep. that focuses on that. You know, I just had work done in my house, and not a single woman <laughs> came through in any of the trades, whether it was plumbing or electrician or woodworking or any of that. And I'm just, I still don't understand that. I mean, I, I mean, Dave, a woman could do electrical work, right? I, There's I've no reason I could. women electricians that were they're good. It, it's it's a What's the word? Uh, a stigma mm. that. Yeah, I'm just trying to understand why, you know, <laughs> why young women aren't going to those trades. You know, why they're getting pushed into cosmetology or something that's sort of been traditionally. And I think some of that. It's some of that is that. Paper. And uh, um, and and you know and I I I think that one of the things that needs to be a, education is actually of our career counselors in the school. Um, you know, for a long time they've been, of course, for a long time they've been saying, "Well, don't go into the trades, go to college," right? You mm -hmm. know, yeah. uh, and uh, and and so you know, it has to be a reorientation of that, and then and then also within that, of course, you know, uh, you know, it doesn't. You know, everyone could get into the trades regardless of. of yeah, you can go to college and have. A Hundred and fifty thousand dollars worth of debt, and you still start yeah. at the bottom. Yeah. yeah. Or you go in the trades, and at the end of four years, you're making a good living. Yeah. Sorry. Um, yeah, I was thirty-five years in the granite industry, <clears throat> sandblasting, a little bit of CAD drafting, but most of my time there was in sandblast, either sandblasting, lead person, and being in there. And I was one of a very few yeah. that were actually in there. Um, but the granite industry is a great program to get into. Um, it's unionized. Some people think that's an awful word, but um, the pay is good. Um, the benefits, you know, and pension, 401k, the whole nine yards. And I ended up retiring at 60 years old because I retired with the rule of 85, which is your years of service and your age equals 85. You can. I retired with a full steel worker pension. Oh, yeah. So you know we've had young men come in, and they've worked for a couple of years. They're all excited, but after a while, it's like I'm sick of getting dirty. It's like, well, where are you going to go? They go someplace and work for less with no benefits, 
and then they can spend more time on their phone. I mean, we actually had to negotiate <laughs> that in the contract that cell phone use was not allowed, um, and it's a charge for, for dismissal as well, after a fashion. But it's just so hard to implement. Yeah. Um, yeah. But that, it certainly, uh, 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 what works for women is, uh, is a great program, and, and uh, again, part of the economic development uh, bill that came out of the House. Uh, 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 the Vermont Works for Women is part of a group that's called Earn, Learn, and Serve, or some combination of those three words. Um, <clears throat> might not have them in the right order, but it's a it's a um, collaborative work between Vermont Works for Women, um, the um, uh, the uh, Audubon Society, uh, and what's the other? There's four. Four, four bodies that are working in it, and basically it's all these uh, paid apprenticeship processes, uh, because their their big argument is is the best way to to get someone uh, ha help someone get a job is to give them a job, uh, and so uh, and so where then you can train them in it, and so uh, there there's a number of these kind of programs out there. Uh, some of it's uh, trail building for the Audubon Society. That's what their what their things are, and. Uh, um, and, and uh, what's the one body? There's one, one of the organizations works with teens, and a large part of what they do is uh, uh, what they call the soft skills of, of, of working, which is you have to show up every day. Who knew? Mm -hmm. <laughs> right? You know? On time. On yeah. time. Uh, you know, and, uh, and so, so they actually have these programs to teach kids this stuff. Um, and uh, so, uh, you know, there's a... Uh, I had to do that initially. <laughs> you had to be on time. I, I, at one point, ran the mail center. Now, when you're in the law department, which I was for many years, you can, you can post a job nationally. People would apply from Arizona to come work in the law department. Not in the mail center, when you're paying minimum wage. So you basically had people that lived within 15 or 20 miles was your pool. And then they would come, but they often came out of families where they didn't, it wasn't demonstrated to them that you showed up to work on time and that you did those things. Yeah. I actually had what we call the prep program where we brought, I hired people based on what I thought they had a good work ethic or a good attitude, and then I taught them what it meant to work at a Fortune 1000 company. Yeah. You show up on time. You know, you, you know, all those things that you had to do. Um, but it was sad to me to think that, wow, you know, now you have to teach kids things that, I don't know, to just mom and dad should have taught. seemed like when I grew up, yeah, you didn't, <laughs> you, you took that for granted, yeah. I want to just say a few words in defense of career counselors, and maybe more broadly just government in general, which is that we have a culture with cultural forces that are subtle and nuanced and deep and hard to get at. Because when I used to chair the education committee, and we had a lot of testimony from educators that it was a problem for them that all the boys wanted to go into auto mechanics and the girls wanted to be cosmetologists. It's not that, that the counselors were saying to the girls, you can't be an auto mechanic, you have to be a hairdresser. It was that they were saying, that's, that, that's what I want to do. And, and I would say also, I know at least my, my son Noah, um, he did not want to go to college. He wanted to be a carpenter. And I hate to admit it, pressured him on going to college. Well, he did. He got a bachelor's degree, I think, to please dad. And he's now paying off his student loan with his very good pay as a carpenter. <laughs> so so uh, I would also say my, my, uh, my brother Kurt is one of four siblings. And uh, the other three, including me, are college educated. And he's an, an electrician. And at one time or another, he has made a loan to each of his college educated <laughs> siblings. So. What year did you go through your apprenticeship? 32, so that would have been 86. 86. Mine was 60. You were 20 years ahead of him. Yeah. Uh, and I went to night school two nights a week in Rotman. I went to Barry two nights a week. Yeah. yeah. For five years. I went to four. 
<laughs> and I worked for Welch Hardware Store as yeah. a plumber. And uh, I was working 48 hours a week, taking home $45.18 take home. I got $64 a week. Yeah. <laughs> and, and this is on my nickel to go to Rutland back and forth. Yep. You, you start at school at 7 and get done at, and get home at 11, 11.30 at night. Yep. So. I'd be at work the next day. Oh. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Oh. yeah. And five and a half days a week we work. Yeah. And, and then I passed my, 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 mass, my uh, apprenticeship and I got my journeyman and I got my master's and then got onto the committee in Montpelier and I preached to him then you could only have so many apprentices versus and I said you're going to run out of plumbers and was I right or wrong mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. You know? but it, what is the ratio now do you know I'm out of the plumbing business I have no idea I, I know that uh, there is there was a so many journeymen and so many uh, apprentices apprentices under a master right right but uh, I, got, I gave up on that because after four or five people that want my job but they don't want any of the responsibilities or yeah. any of that, they want my, my pay. Right, yeah. right. But they don't want any of the responsibilities, you know. Yeah. And I do it myself. <laughs> now, Dick, for you, I got a question for you. Yep. What do you pay for registration for your car? Um, I got a question on that, too. Okay. About $75 right now. Yeah, I don't. Uh, frankly, Cindy takes care of all that for me. My you must wife have does. some idea what you pay. You just and what, 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 where are we going? My point is, my pickup, I'm paying $226 a year for registration. Yeah. And I pay gas tax when I run it. What are you paying for to use of the road? Yes. Well, of course, I'm, I'm driving a hybrid, so I pay. I, I, so, what I'm so, I, so I pay a gas tax. You like gas how, do you, how do you pay gas tax with a, how much? When I in the ratio? part of the price of the gas is, is okay. How about the total electric ones? What are they paying for the use of the roads? Oh, okay. If if that's what, uh, right now nothing. And okay. and and, uh, and you're giving them the subsidy to buy the electric car. Well, it, it is, they're, they're doing us all a favor. I mean, they're, they're polluting the air less and uh, do, contributing to global warming less, and we want an incentive. That's not an oversight. That is a conscious decision to create an incentive to, like to hold that. But also, the, the fact is revenues for maintenance of, um, of the highways are down um, because pe more people are using less gas. Uh, either because of a hybrid or electric cars, but also even um, the, the, the gas cars are more efficient than they used to be, and uh, people no, drive. not real. We had a Chevy Chevette, yeah. I can't tell you what year it was, it got 52 miles a gallon. It was a diesel. You are not getting that now. Now, what year was that car? Have no clue. I can't remember. It was probably 20 years ago. No, yeah. more than we, that. More than that. We've gone downhill. Well, o overall, the, 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 there's less gas consumption. So there is the idea that at some point we're going to have to start hitting up the, the users of, of cleaner cars. Uh, I've always thought that about um, the use of the woods, that I, uh, of course now I've got the arthritis, but for years I was a hiker, and I always thought there should be a tax on backpacks and hiking shoes and just that, that kind of gear because we do use the woods and the hunters think they own it because they, they have the hunters. <laughs> <laughs> well, no, no, but, but like they, they think it's just theirs, that, that the hikers are sort of trespassing on the, on the hunter's forest. You know? I'll give and you one about an hour. I said, I'm willing to pay my share. How about a bicycle? How many million dollars we put in a bike pass and what do you get out of them? for mm -hmm. registration. Uh, again, I actually agree. I, I, I think that uh, um, for, for one thing, it's paying your fair share, but it's also buying into it. You have standing if you're paying into it. So I, I for one, have always thought I, I would have no problem paying for a bike. But, so, as well. so that I do know that the House Transportation Committee is actually exploring the idea of, of some kind of fees to electric car users precisely yeah. to pay for the, yeah. their use of the road. Yeah. Um, and, and the question about bike paths, um, actually uh, bike paths, uh, what they do is uh, there have been a lot of uh, research on their benefit to the local economy. So, so what happens with the bike paths is, is 
they bring people into those communities to ride their bikes and then they spend money at the restaurants and the stores mm -hmm. and the, those kind of things. So, um, so that's why they're trying so hard to get that the, the Lamoille Valley uh, bike Trail. path. Yeah. trail across the state yes. because it's trail trail. It, uh, it's bringing in so much. In the wintertime, a lot of those, <clears throat> or some of those rail trails are used by snowmobiles. Yeah, because yeah. um, yeah, I used to cross-country ski on the one down outside of Lebanon, you know, and I'd be cross-country skiing and just about getting run over by snowmobiles, and they're like, hey, you guys got to share the road. Yeah. And they just didn't want to. Yeah. But, There's yeah. a few bad eggs everywhere. Oh, yeah. yeah. Mm -hmm. I think bicycles in the cities are also so much handier. You can't find a place to park your car, yeah. and if you, yeah. if you do, it costs you an arm and, a, arm, an arm and a leg, and at least you can get a few blocks without, you know, I think, yeah. you know, I think a lot of it is geared, geared to the, the city people as opposed to those of us in Bethel, Vermont. I, I, do you rent in Montpelier? No, during the okay. no, I, I rent a, a place in Montpelier during the legislative session, and around this time of year, as it starts on, I, I start using a bike mm. to get to and from the state house, and I have often gone faster than the cars. You know, the cars have have the they stopped at the red lights, so I can pull right up to the front of the line, mm -hmm. and it's um, watch out for doors. <laughs> oh, you got you have to you do have to watch out you do. Um, we tend to think of bicycles as recreation here, and bike paths often don't go anywhere. They're, you go out and ride for the fun of it. Um, you go to Ireland, for example, and you see guys in overcoats with their briefcases <laughs> riding their bikes to, to work. You see nuns in the hammock riding their bikes. You know, it's how you get from here to there. I live a mile away, and I usually don't ride a bike into town because there's that stretch just above Tessie's where the road is so narrow that I have to ride. I have to ride in the in the car part, and it's it's a little scary. I have a quick question to ask. I'm going to change the subject <clears throat> just quickly, because then I have to run. But um, can you give us a status update on the recreational trapping bill? Um, yeah. I know it's not popular <laughs> with some folks, but <clears throat> I'm wondering where things stand. OK. Last year, I introduced a bill to prohibit mm -hmm. uh, leg hold traps. As often happens, uh, the bill did not, well, the bill passed, but not in the form in which it was introduced. Instead, um, we set up a study. Uh, a study in the Vermont legislature is usually a booby prize. Mm. Okay, you want a bill to do something, yeah. and they say, well, we'll study it. But it's not nothing. And this was, again, a thing where my question to me was, do I love this, or is this as good as it's going to get? And so I, even, I supported that study being conducted by a, a group of various points of view uh, put together by the uh, Fish and Wildlife Commissioner. Um, my view then, this, this year there is an, another bill to prohibit recreational trapping. Uh, my view was that having agreed to the study last year, I really had to hold up my end of the deal, which was I would not support legislation until after the study. Uh, where, which is a booby prize. <clears throat> which is a booby prize. That's. So how long was the study? And it I've gone down. I've gone down fighting in glorious defeat I more know, than once. I know. But you, you got to be selective on, on how often you yes. do that. Okay, yes. you're working with other people. They don't agree with you. Um, um, so in any case, we have now so far we have been ha received a report from the commissioner, and we have uh, a, a verbal report, and we have a draft copy. So we will have the report. Mm -hmm. Soon, there is a bill, again in this session, to prohibit recreational trapping. I did not sign on because, as I say, I had made a different commitment to get what I, I got. It will it will not be passed this year, but it's a two year legislative session. It will almost certainly come up next year. There are other members mm -hmm. of the committee who want it, and so it will be looked at by the Natural Resources and Energy Committee, which in the Senate is also <coughs> the Fish and Wildlife Committee, and it will be looked at next January. Can I ask you who did the study? 
because there are concerns about fish and wildlife yeah. being hunter heavy. That's oh, it is. It yeah. is. And 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 the group that that did the study is is hunter, or tra in this case, trapper heavy. And and even the, the quest their question is what's the best way to trap? They're looking at best practices, right? Which, as opposed to the uh, more underlying question, which is is this something we want to be happening at all? Right. Yeah. You know, wow. we know now that animals feel pain, that they're part of the, you know ecosystems and family systems, yeah. and when we disturb that we create bigger problems. And m my concern is if the trappers are doing the study, then that doesn't become a factor. Mm -hmm. And if you're watching folks with videos on social media stomping animals to kill them so they don't destroy the pelts, I think we know better than that. And I think we need to do better. It's, it's I know an it's an us and them thing, a cultural well, thing. Well, unfortunately, yeah, it is, it has been become an us and them thing, which to a certain extent, it, 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 the statistics, again, it depends on who you ask, the statistics, it seems that, that there are not an awful lot of people who trap recreationally. Okay, however, there are some, and it is a Vermont tradition, and you don't take that lightly. I'm willing to outlaw it, but I don't take that lightly. There are some people who do, frankly. I, I wish they'd be a little more respectful. As you're saying to somebody, this is a tradition, but probably it, it, this, it's, it's not a good There are idea. lots of things that, that were traditions that aren't allowed anymore because yeah. they aren't ethical. Mm. Yeah. So, and this, this, but this is a rough one. I, I, my first year in the Senate, we had a bill from Trout Unlimited to outlaw pickerel shooting. Vermont was the only state that had pickerel shooting. Because you don't have to shoot the pickerel, you just shoot the water and then the concussion that <laughs> raises them up. Probably not many people here have been pickerel shooting. No. <laughs> well, I, I'll tell you, that was that was a lesson for me. I was a freshman senator. I thought, well, that's the right. Of course it should be illegal. I got a call from one, it was one old woman. She just said, you don't let him smoke cigarettes at the diner. You don't let him have a can of beer on his way out from work. <laughs> You've taken everything. All this old man has left is pickerel shooting. Yeah. And and I said, oh, you know what? Yeah. Well, Christ, let them do it. So <laughs> it was, there, there are times when, when I, I think pickerel shooting has sort of died down now. I don't know. Is it still happening? I'm not sure. I haven't done it in years. Oh, yeah. No. I know. I haven't. The time of year has a lot to do with it. I think it's the right at the very beginning of spring. So yeah, right one, yeah, about now. Okay. And you'd be walking along, and, and this ice is sunk, and all of a sudden you go right in, and there'll be a waiter. Yeah. <laughs> it's a, it is apparently. I mean, it's it's a heavily a Lake Champlain mm -hmm. oh, yeah. sport, but Islands. it's done mainly by guys from Windsor County. Yeah, right. It's, yeah. It's, it was my guy. Looking forward to it. <laughs> yeah. May I ask one just quick question? You're talking about trapping, and yeah. I don't have a horse in the race, but just how do you define a recreational trapper from any other kind of trapper? What is. Yeah, I, there, John Murphy used to serve in the House of Representatives from Ludlow, uh, and he <coughs> used to, he said he trapped to get his kids their summer clothes. So is that a that recreational a, trapper? No, it? that was a business. He did it as a business. He sold the well, pelts. Well, that's what I'm How do you, yeah. uh, if you sell the pelts, as you're uh, referring to, that's a business. Yeah, now, whether it's it's also recreation, because you can't, it's like sugaring, is that, it you seems can't live on that, but you do it's it. It's part of the package. It's, yeah, not a good I mean, point. how do you, that's so this guy, it's, his, he's a business and he can go, he can go trapping. And but you can't own, can't trap all year round or whatever. I mean, I don't I don't know why the word is even in there. It's either either trapping or it's not trapping. It might well, that was uh, two years ago. That was my bill was just against leg hole trap. Theory. And, and we don't now have now. It won't be there. There's uh, I, I I guess the the quick answer is I, I don't know the answer to your question. The, the, the people, the or the anti-trap people have come up with a bill that they, again, I, and I'm not on this this year's bill because I made promises last year. I, I guess. So, uh, the, the, um, and I will I will ask, I'll ask them what I, I, I really don't care, it's just I'm trying to. No, it's a good point, it's a, it's a, it's a valid point. I got one more question and we'll go back to the Electric Park. Yeah. Has any, have you had any of your committees had uh, 
seen the presentation by GMP about zero outage? Obviously not. Well, we we well we've seen, seen so many things from so many. I'm, I'm trying to. I would hope zero <laughs> outage would have clicked. A uh, little. Oh, the, are you talking about the program they're going to do yeah. here in Bethel? Yeah. A yeah. little <laughs> plug for the. Uh, we just signed on to. Oh. A <laughs> little plug for the, our Slack board team. Now there's three yeah. of us here. Uh, we're on Zoom, so you want to know what we're doing? Go to Zoom. It's it's recorded. It's there. You can look way back. We've had a, we had a very good presentation from GMP yes. about yeah. a z a zero outage. Uh, Bethel is on the docket if they can get the, the grant that they're looking for from the feds to make it so that mm -hmm. in four years there will be no outage in that. Yeah. Um, we just signed on to that. I just Friday. Yeah. I because this is kind of part of my bailiwick. I I quizzed the lady pretty hard. I thought. And she had a answer and a good answer for every question. First person I've talked to ever <laughs> to could answer my questions. I mean, even about the lithium batteries, what are we going to do with that? She's had an answer about what we're going to do with that. I just about our infrastructure, she had an answer about that. I'm not sure I'm Well, they all true. <laughs> <laughs> she's very articulate. She's very articulate. She, she believable. Was very she believable. Who is she? Tracy. Where is she? That's the same one. GMC. Yeah. We beat the other night down. She had a, we had yeah. a dinner the other night there. The GMP put on a um a, I think a, she one, a dinner. Thing, I think. Yeah, I think she was. I think she was. Yeah, she, she also was a, a news anchor. That's that same the one? Oh, no, Chris not, not that one. No, no, no this no. woman, she was in Fort Collins, Colorado before she came here. Oh, no, you're, right. no, you're talking about Kristen. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah, she used to work for WCAX. Yeah. 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 No, this, this woman this lady, and then, awesome. uh, then because I was so curious, uh, I signed on to go to the uh, uh, Bethel Energy Committee because they had the presentation by another lady who couldn't make it to our meeting. And these people, if they do half of what they said, they're way ahead of you guys, mm -hmm. way ahead of you. So I would like to think that you should maybe listen to what they're saying. Okay. Thank you. I, just a side note on batteries and to her, her question about recycling. I just bought stock in a company who is, is just built this big thing out in Utah, uh, in, uh, Nevada, to recycle lithium batteries because the cost, the cost of recycling, they expect when they <clears throat> is going to be cheaper and save the slave labor and all that sort of thing, and they are also working on panels. Right now, there's there's not a critical mass of the batteries, but uh, but uh, solar panels are now a lot of them are 25 years old, which is pretty much the end of the thing, and and uh, they're developing ways to re to, to to make the things so they're easier to recycle in the, the whole nine yards. So a lot of it is the, the, uh, the, the private sector, if they can make a buck at it, mm -hmm. um, and it, those are more individual people instead of having governments do those type of things, I think there's money in it. And just, just a, a quick side note, because I have solar panels and stuff, I went from a house where I was paying somewhere between 3000 3, and and four thousand dollars a year for heat and electricity. This last year, I paid three hundred dollars using solar panels and heat pumps. And your house is that size, right? <laughs> well, it is, it, uh, and it, you're, you're right. It is substantially smaller, and it's built insul it's insulated, yeah. mm -hmm. and and it did cost me. But to your point of payback, yeah. and from the house I went, went to, from what I have now, um, it was it's. I don't know, six to eight years in payback, yeah, right. and, and that's not including that's not including the tax credits I got. Of course, I was making money at that time, but uh, right. um, well, I understand all that. The reason I said that is because the, but I the payback isn't as bad as that, you, that, it might that, sound. Uh, came to look at my property. You know, you got to cut this tree, that tree. You got to get your neighbor to cut mm -hmm. all those trees, and we got to put twice as many panels on your roof because of your location and your roofs aren't directly at the right angle so that it drove the cost up to drive 
the payback into a much longer time. Yeah, well, that's where community solar comes in. That's that's no, what I was going to say. That's where in Vermont. you can they still every house should have its own solar panels. You can I'm still buy panels. into you still can buy into it. <clears throat> yeah, with yeah. with these other other things that are placed in optimum in optimum areas and. You're sitting right beside the like moderator. He's right there. I tried to, uh, I, because I, did, I believe in electric, just one minute, I tried to propose places, and I know a place where a 150 megawatt place would go and nobody would ever know it's there. Nope, not interested. But you want to do something right beside the road where the electric line goes right there, well, where everybody's going to drive by it, and we, have, we don't want telecommunication towers anywhere. Yeah. But the PUC passed a thing where if it's a municipality, you can do anything you want. Case yeah. in point. Mm -hmm. Nobody wanted to see it when it was going to be up on Christian Hill or over on some mountain way the heck over here. Yeah. But now everybody's got to look at it. Yeah. That's, uh, my, that's my, not my sorry, I'm done. I'm, I just, yeah. the PUC <laughs> and I don't see eye to eye. Yeah. <laughs> Kudos to GMP for what it is doing right I am concerned about the whole issue of net metering with GMP and their resistance to, uh, to, to allowing net metering because of the, the reliance on infrastructure that they, and if they use the, the solar that's generated at that farm and they don't get reimbursed for the infrastructure that takes the electricity from that farm to the <coughs> to the user. Uh, there are resistances in GMP and the Public Utilities Commission to a full understanding and rollout as support for uh, the the net metering. Possibilities. It's it's part. It's an essential part of uh, using solar uh, that that is not being uh, fully supported uh, by the utility. And so that's just a, a kudos to where they're doing it right. Mm -hmm. uh, less kudos. It, it's kind of like, are you going to put a field where it's out of sight or just just where it's most convenient to the elect, to the utility. Those are all issues that, if you get into the weeds enough, <laughs> that, that become issues. I also have a comment about aesthetics. When we talk about the aesthetics of a solar array or a wind array, aesthetics compared to what? I used to live in Appalachia, where they didn't put windmills on tops of mountains. They took the tops of mountains away and replaced them with infertile meadows. Now, you have a choice. You can maintain aesthetics, which would you rather see? A barren, what used to be a mountain, or a wind farm up on the mountain ridge? You have a choice. Would you rather see a McNeil dumping pollution into the air by burning wood? Or would you rather see a windmill on top of a mountain ridge? It's, it's, it's not a question of it looks pretty. It looks pretty compared to what? The, the, is McNeil more aesthetically pleasing than a coal-fired plant? to get our electricity? 
You decide, <laughs> but let's let's ask the full question compared to what is is always an important question when it comes to aesthetic. <clears throat> and in Vermont, where do you suppose those energy tax credit went to? Connecticut. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. We have to look at them. I they get the credit. Not that I'm opposed to them, I'm not, because I'm, you know, right. it's the way to do right. it. But, but, but we didn't benefit but by it. for some, those are really very beautiful. Uh -huh. yeah. uh, they're, they're not, well, again, aesthetically compared to what? And I, I agree, you know, we shouldn't be selling those energy credits someplace else so that we can continue burning coal and... Well, for years, <clears throat> I don't pay much attention to my electric bill anymore, but we signed on for 40% of cow power through GMP. And it's not that much more expensive per kilowatt to jump on the cow power bandwagon. Not sure how much that has expanded or if it's even, you know, doing a whole, a whole lot more right now. But using the methane gas from, from cows and producing electricity. VTC did that, didn't they? I think so. Well, yeah, this came through GMP. And what are they doing with it now? I have no idea. It shut down. How many thousands of dollars did he put into it? That? It has to be really big to be to work. Yeah. They are not big enough. The, no. the big yeah. farms over on Route 7. Well, was one yeah. about yeah. 4,000 head. Yeah. yeah. Right. They Those just went guys that can make yeah. it work. Yeah. Mm -hmm. We were in, in Barstow, California. We're touring the country. We, on top of the mountain, looked down and. And I said, Bonnie, it can't be a lake down here. What it was is mirrors shining up onto these vessels and, and to produce and, and make steam to make electricity. Huh. Yeah. It supplied 6,500 houses, okay? It cost $1,200,000,000. It ran five years and they tore it down. But that's our dollars. It was a federal funded thing. Foolishness. Didn't work. Didn't well, work. Was it foolish or was it an experiment that had negative It's a pretty results. expensive experiment. Well, so the last five hard. years to spend that kind of money. And then they had to decommission it. That's what it cost to build it. Now it's right back to vacant land again. It costs money to learn. Mm -hmm. <laughs> yes. So what do you figure the cost per kilowatt hour was oh, yeah. for that thing? Mm -hmm. it, it's like you said about your aesthetics on your solar field. You can put a right out in the middle of a beautiful hay field. You can put your solar panels in it. God help you if you want to put a commercial building there. You got to go through Act 250 and look what I cost you. It would make employment. So I don't know. I just have a mixed feeling about this stuff. On, on aesthetics, I, I do want to say that I think government is not particularly good <laughs> at making aesthetic judgments. The Soviet Union had something called Soviet, uh, socialist realism as a style of painting. And it's dreadful. It looks like comic book art, you know. Of course, some people think comic book art is great, but I'm going to say you don't want the government making heavy aesthetic decisions. But what government does, for example, you mentioned Act 250, is that there are <clears throat> you cannot cause an undo. That undo is used in Act 250 a lot. You cannot do an un create an undue aesthetic degradation. In other words, don't do stuff that's really ugly. Is really what it's saying. And and people will say, well, that's that's the subject of judgment, and to a certain extent, it is. But I, I don't. I remember once I had said that I thought something was ugly, and someone said, well, that's a subjective decision. I said, yeah. So I've agreed. I'm I'm, I'm pleading guilty. Yes, it's subjective. Now look me in the eye and tell me I'm wrong. And. You know, he said, no, no, it's ugly. <laughs> I'll give it to you. So it's, it's sort of protecting the aesthetic values more than requiring that people do beautiful stuff. Is it? If the, the, and, and Vermont is beautiful, and we all agree on that. And, and that beauty is, is worth protecting. I, I think there, is a lot, there are a lot of places, even in beautiful Vermont, there are a lot of places that are already ugly, and it won't do any harm to put solar collectors there. Uh, a, a disused, uh, a used up gravel pit. Yes, solar pit. Uh, parking lots are ugly, just put, you know, in fact, they might even provide a little bit of shelter for the cars. Um, 
I, I th do think we have to be careful about placement. Um, uh, I was invited to a meeting in Taftsville, a village in the town of Woodstock, by the bridge there, and uh, uh, on Route 4. I say the bridge is bridges every place. Um, there's a covered bridge with a power station. And they did not want a solar farm right next to the historical 18th century, back to the 18th century graveyard. And I agreed with them that a solar array did not belong there. Yeah. But I said to them, I said, here's the deal. Anytime anyone ever says no to windmills or solar collectives, if you're saying not here, then the question is, OK, yeah. not here, where? If not here, where? And I think that's a reasonable position. Because, mm -hmm. well, we've got to put them someplace. One thing that we didn't discuss yet today, uh, <laughs> housing. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> and employment. One of the biggest employers here in town, GW, or Nolato. I heard the other day they have about 12, 15 Afghanis working in there. They come from Brooklyn every day to do their job. They are temporary employees. They pay them about $25 an hour. And now they say, we got to cut that down to, you know, you want to stay here to a lot less money. And here you attract the people. My point is about the refugees. There are so many around, and we keep on bringing them, but we don't know what to do with them. You know, we think we know what to do with them. We'll we find you a job, and here's a prime example. You know, they're thinking, these guys think of going to Texas. How do we deal with that? We, in one hand, we say we have no housing. On the other hand, bring them in, we'll take care of them. What is the state's take on that? You want to do S-100 or shall I? Uh, I mean, uh, it, okay. I mean it, it's a Senate bill, so you probably know more about it than I do. But, but I mean, I could play with it, too, if you want. Okay, well, I'll, I'll, I'll tell you. We have S-100, Senate bill on, on housing. Uh, I'm not the best person. I voted for it. But again, this was yet another example of I made my case. My colleagues were not persuaded. Then the question is, can I live with this? And I thought, I'm not going to vote against the housing bill. It has, for one, it has $90 million in it to, to help uh, with low-income housing. We have people now living in mo old, disused motels. And uh, as the weather warms up and federal money starts to dry up, we're going to have people living in tents. Probably we already do. Uh, but uh, the main thrust of S-100 is is... It's the belief, and it's a shame Allison Clarkson's not here because she's the vice chair of the Senate Economic Development Committee, and this is their bill. And she's an enthusiast for it, and I, I will um, try to be fair. The idea is that we don't want sprawl development. Vermonters going back to Dean Davis in the 1960s and the beginning of the, or the expansion of the ski industry and the wild development that was happening in the 60s. Uh, have, Vermonters have felt that there is a, a danger of Vermont becoming New Jersey and that we want to keep Vermont wonderful. Uh, and that was, that was really where Act 250 came from, the basic idea being if you want to develop, you can develop here, but you got to do it right. And we have, besides Act 250, a large <coughs> variety of, of the Agency of Natural Resources permits that are required for development and uh, town zoning and town requirements as well. The idea is that we want to continue to concentrate development in already developed areas and not have sprawl. And that's, that goes back, in, in the 1960s, it was identified and described in so many words. But the, the actual practice goes back to the, uh, to the 18th century, to the beginning of European settlement here. And that is concentrated developments, also called villages, or, and little concentrated developments called hamlets, and surrounded by green space, undeveloped land or agricultural land and that we want to continue to not 
make Vermont, New Jersey, to not, to not be spreading. The incentive that S-100 creates is that to basically weaken Act 250, which is why I opposed it, but or at least opposed that provision. I ended up supporting the bill. To, rem to, to lessen Act 250 protection in concentrated areas, which is to say villages, in towns that have zoning, that have uh, water and sewer, that are basically uh, where, where you, you want your development. I have always thought, for example, that as you go out the back road to Royalton, and you go up that hill, there's this meadow that was once agricultural that's now filled with, with nice houses. It's a nice little neighborhood. And there are people who complain, oh, that was a beautiful pasture, and now it's, it's houses. And I think this house is exactly where houses ought to be. It took an existing village and just made it a little bit bigger, expanded the as opposed to what is happening all over America, which is here's the village, and then oh, five miles down the road, here's the housing development. You know, which, and then, well, you got a housing development there and a village here. Why not put another housing development right between them? And the next thing you know, you've got the. Burlington. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> so, uh, <clears throat> anyway, the, the, the idea is, is we're trying. Uh, as I say, in the end, the question for me was can I live with this? And I thought, yeah, I can. And um, so, we'll see. One of the yeah. things, the house, the house uh, budget included one, uh, include one hundred thirty-four point five million dollars uh, on housing investments, and of course now that budget is over, you know, Senate, and they'll yeah. they'll fiddle with it, and we'll you know we'll see how it all plays out. But uh, part of what that included was certainly it included, um, uh, it included a number of things. One was um, you know to uh, p provide capital for middle income for modern who want to build a house right because because if you if you're low income there are a number of programs and obviously if you've got a lot of money you don't need it it, it really is the middle income that that no one can afford to build a house these days uh, so there's some opportunities for that there uh, as dick was talking about there's some some changes to Act 250 to allow uh, development in places that already have the infrastructure in place. Uh, some of that is also includes some funding for rehabilitation of apartment buildings that have, you know, people can't afford to finish. We've got, I don't know what the status of the yellow block here is, uh, but you know, uh, but he's been working on that for a long time. And uh, uh, I, I actually, I've been trying to to try to hunt him down. I can't find his phone number anywhere. I'll get it to you. Because uh, I'd love to tell him that there's some money for it, you know. Um, and uh, uh, just like I, I just put uh, Kevin Barry in touch with the Green Mountain Economic Development Corporation because there's money to help him finish the apartments upstairs. Uh, and so trying to get him to, to, to link in because that's housing. We want the housing. Uh, there's also uh, some, some um, changes and allotments in there for people who want to create an accessory dwelling, right? You know, we didn't used to allow people to, 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 to turn the 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 uh, the family you know they used to call it the mother-in-law apartment but well you know but but uh, you know that that piece in that little apartment turn that into something that you could use for rental to allow a place for like your Af Afghan workers a, a, a decent place that they can live um, so there's a number of programs that they that they're putting in one of the Act 250 changes is also the uh, allowability of uh, uh, actually, basically duplexes instead of instead of you know it's a, in places that used to be only single family homes. Uh, so there's a there's a number of pieces that they're trying to put in place. This is not you know housing is not my committee, so I'm I'm just going on notes that somebody sent me. Uh, but uh, but that's uh, but that's that's some of the stuff we're working on. We're fully aware that housing is a is a it, yeah, the, the big thing is workforce development, uh, housing, because even if you get the workforce, then they have no place to live. And then if they have children, they have no place to send the kids. So they, one of them has to stay home to take care of the kids. And so, again, that's another worker that isn't in the, you know, and that's income they're not making. And so, so it's this, this sort of triangle of problems that all 
exacerbate each other that we're, we're trying to, to address. And, and By 2030, you want to have 30% of the land controlled by the state, either the Vermont Land Trust or something like this. That is one, of, yeah, I think that's the goal that By one of the By 2050, 50%. What happens to the taxes of the other people that own property? That takes us out of tax roll, right? Up in a quarry. Land trust pays taxes. Yeah. Yeah. Okay, they do. Where my quarry was was 1,700 acres. On 1,700 acres, the taxes were $6,700 because I used to have to pay it when I had the quarry. Uh, what about, and you can't ever do anything that land again. They just, what, 1,700 acres they just got in Killington? Which just Vermont Land Trust is? Mm -hmm. Where does the money come from to pay for this land? Well, first of all, I'm not, uh, I'm not sure you're right that, that it's all going to be taken off the tax rolls. There, there are well, various here, protections, you know, to... Okay. What I'm saying is, on 1,700 acres, it should be more than $6,500. We gave my son six acres up behind our house. The tax is at 1500 on that, and there's nothing there. So... If you got 30% of the land, or 50% of the land by 50, 30, 2050, yeah. who is going to pay for the land? Who's, and you can't do anything about land again. Well, again, you the, can't the, build your houses you want to build. The conservation of land, for, um, tell me if, if I'm wrong on this, Kirk, that, that for example, uh, forest land that's preserved can, can still be logged. It has to be logged be sustainably. Logged, but you can't do anything else with well, it. It can still be part of a working landscape, though. In yeah. fact, there was, I bought, there was 27 acres in all out of that 15 or 1,700 acres. And they were supposed to put in, it was a seven acre sand cut, mound sand. You know what mound sand is, expensive. They didn't put that into this thing. So Dave, the owner of it, he, he sold a million dollar apartment building in New York City. He had to get his money back invested within a year. So we want, he's primary, his logging, that's what he wants. And so, but he said, I've got 50 acres, I'll give you 15 acres for the seven Vermont Land Trust, that's nothing to him. So there's a natural resource right there that we do, that you can never touch it again. It's gone. Well, the Land Trust isn't a government organization. It's a separate right, yeah. right, it's a private organization. Yeah, where, did the, where does the Vermont Land Trust get their money from? From donors, wealthy yeah. people. Well, they gotta be some wealthy. Mm -hmm. What, we got what do you suppose? Right? Plenty of them. There's a lot of wealthy yeah. people. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Now, this 1,700 acres that was in the news last week in Killington, what will happen to that land? Nobody ever build on anything again, right? I don't know. I mean, you're asking about, about a particular co contractual arrangement. It was uh, last week in the news. Particular, yeah, well, I, I read the news regularly, but I don't memorize every single story. You are also talking about a very fundamental issue in not just Vermont, but the role of property taxes vis-a-vis -vis income tax. Uh, and who pays, who pays the piper? Uh, a progressive income tax distributes the cost uh, among all of the the people based on their ability to pay. A property tax does not, and uh, it's so. As long as we continue to fund our towns and our schools on the basis of property yeah. rather than on the basis of ability of the taxpayer to pay, we are going to be caught in that kind of a conundrum. And, and at some point, I would argue that we need to be, we need to think about tax policy writ large uh, so that uh, we can do things like conserve pro conserve land that is to the benefit of all of the people and have those pay those taxes that are necessary to provide the public good but have the, those charged to the people who are in the best position uh, to, to pay for that.
Yeah. Our taxes are eighty three hundred dollars a year. Our property taxes. Great. It's yeah. twenty thousand dollars a year per student. And that's where our taxes mm -hmm. go to. Most of our taxes well, go to education. I understand and that. I don't think you're getting twenty thousand dollars worth of education per year. Bingo. For pay it. I, I, I disagree with you hundred percent. Well, but I'm I'm ar I'm not arguing about whether or not we're getting our dollars worth. I'm arguing that you are paying more probably than you should be paying for to pay for that twenty thousand dollars a year because if you were paying on the basis of your ability to pay not on how much land you owned that would be a whole different conversation i don't know gene you should have opened this up right at nine o'clock but <laughs> a lot of the property on my road is owned by out-of-staters and they mm -hmm. do not earn any money in this state and so if it's all based on their income all that money's going to connecticut uh, or new york and meanwhile we have all this land here that they have sucked up because they have money yeah. so, so i think i fundamentally disagree with that but if it you, is nine o'clock yeah yeah. <laughs> if, if you, yeah so and, and i think i mentioned this before and, and someone did make the remark that they, we, you know, there's lots of studies, and again, uh, you know, to go to Dick's point, lots of, lots of times, not always, right? You know, uh, it, it, the house uses studies just like your parents used, <laughs> right? You know, it's like, Ask your da da Dad, can I borrow the car? <laughs> you know, it's either yes, no, or we'll see. <laughs> and we'll see really means no. I'm just not telling you yet. Yeah. Um, and so, lots of times, studies are we'll see. Uh, but, um, but, but the. Uh, uh, chair Emily Kornheiser of Brattleboro, who's the uh, chair of the Ways and House Ways and Means Committee, um, meaning tax, which, which is the folks that figure out how to pay for stuff, the the taxes and the fees and all that stuff. Um, uh, one of the things she did last summer was convened a, a study group uh, to look at the, this entire tax question. Now I know. There have been previous groups that have looked at this tax question, um, and uh, but she does seem pretty motivated uh, while she's there to to have, make some fundamental changes. And one of the things, uh, after talking to all, you know, figuring the numbers with the fiscal offices and and you know the administration and you know trying to bring in everybody who knows something, um, uh, they came up with four different potential. Solutions, uh, you know, of how to transition to have um, a large part of the taxes that we currently have attached to our property be attached to income, but but they never completely separate out, um, you know, second homes, you know, non-resident owners. They they still are gonna they would still be paying um, property tax. Uh, but you know, so but that's why. But then it's like, well, what percentage and who pays how? You know how those percentages go, and and then of course you know uh, income tax. If you if you base your all your funding for your town and your school on income tax, well, you know if you have a recession, every, all the income goes down, and uh, you know and then you can't so, drive anywhere anyway. So what does that <laughs> I know, so then you can't afford your school for that year, and then you know and then it comes up. So so it's a lot. It's a lot more. Fluid, whereas a property tax, you know, you can always just hit them for the same amount every year, unless it, no, unless they re, yeah, unless they reappraise it and it goes up, right? Yeah. So, so it's a, it's, it's more fluid uh, uh, if you attach it to the income tax. So, trying to figure out ways to, to stabilize, but also still distribute it more, more uh, uh, equitably amongst people who may have high income and live in uh, a very beautiful one-acre home. Uh, I, I, I know it's nine o'clock. Yeah. There are basically three ways the government taxes your money. Uh, first of all, uh, while you're while it's coming into your life, income, there's an income tax. Secondly, while it's sitting there, that's a property tax. Thirdly, when you spend it, that's sales tax. And Vermont has going has always tried to balance the three, because. Each has advantages and disadvantages. Uh, one of the real advantages of a property tax is that it's stable. Uh, the property, of course, property tax values do plummet; they do go up. But 
the appraisal is there for a while, and then there's a we it's fairly predictable. Income tax can can go all over the place. You forgot one. You forget. When they, you save money, they tax you on that too. You forgot that one. No, that's uh, <laughs> that's income. Well, that's income. Yeah. Uh, the uh, the idea was, was to have a, have a balance. Uh, the income tax is especially attractive because it seems more just. It seems more fair. Mm -hmm. But and this is a Republican's argument, but it has merit, and I'm going to make it. Which is there's a limit. There's a built-in limit to how high you can soak the rich. You soak them enough, and they leave. And they leave, okay. Now, where that point is, is debatable, and generally, I, I might be a little more adventurous in taxing the rich than my Republican colleagues, okay. But there is a point of diminishing returns there someplace, okay. You got to be aware of that. Um, the problem with the property tax is that it can be very unjust, uh, in particular for someone who is a child of an old multi-generational Vermont family, yeah. which means if you go back several generations, probably they were farmers. Yeah. And with someone has inherited a lot of land, which now is not valued, you know. And of course, you can get, I'm jumping ahead of myself. The problem being that the agricultural land is valued on what it's worth to a Connecticut lawyer, mm -hmm. okay? And, and, and so it's worth a lot more than the heir of a Vermont farm family can, can, can afford. Mm -hmm. That's why we have current use. And we do have a variety of fixes for these problems, such as current use valuation. If you're, if you're still using the land agriculturally, and that we're pretty loose on what that exactly means, that means also silviculturally, you have a logging plan and you log it every 20 years, uh, then you are valued at its agricultural value, not at its resale value. That's, that's a fix. We also have a fix on the property tax, um, uh, which is uh, income sensitivity that came about 20 years ago with Act 60. And um, I remember a woman once saying to me, why, this Act 60 is terrible, it drove our rates. If, if I didn't have that income sensitivity, I wouldn't be able to afford Act 60. And the answer is, well, Access to gain created the income sensitivity. But there you're limited to a certain percentage of your income that goes into the tax on house and yard. What is it, two acres? Two and a half acres? acres. Two, two acres. acres. And, and it, you know, your garage, it's not any building there, but, you know, attendant buildings. Um, I think one problem is, is and this, I've always where whenever I say this, I say, Dick, you're committing political suicide here because people will misunderstand. But there's more to property than real estate. When we say property tax, we mean real estate tax, land and, and buildings. There's other kinds of property. And there are many, many countries that tax, uh, and I'm not saying have more taxes, just tax more different things, which is presumably you would tax all of them less, that rather than just taxing real estate, things such as your stock portfolio. Things you own. If I can just put in two plugs yeah. <clears throat> uh, to make sure we vote on the water bond next week, because we cannot add any more houses within the village that's on the water and septic, because we are not up to code. So if somebody does have a land lot in town, you cannot build a house unless you want to put in your own well or septic. And then that's th next Tuesday, then next Thursday, the 20th. I've been on the planning commission for a couple of years. Gene used to be on it. We've been doing all the rezoning, and that's going to be a public meeting, um, I believe, at 6.30 at the town hall on the 20th. And we did talk what you were talking about, the accessory dwellings, shortening the amount of land you need to subdivide so we can find some way to add more housing to Bethel. And we've been working on this uh, the whole two years that I've been on there. So that'll be up for public discussion. Um, but the water bill is very important to pass because we are not up to code with the state. And we got a good deal on the bond. And it's less than it used to be a couple of years ago. Um, and we got to just make sure we have it while we can because if we need to do it again, I mean, one way or the other, the water is going to get fixed, whether people vote yeah. on it or not. 
But if we don't get the bond with a cheaper interest rate, we're really going to be in trouble. So, Thank you. You saved me from being a liar. I promised my wife, Cindy, that I would make that announcement here, and I had completely forgotten it. And you can vote absentee. You can vote absentee. Yeah, you can just go to the town clerk. The yeah. They'll mail you a ballot. Just you know, bring it back, or just go to the town office, fill it out, and hand it right back to Pam. I, I got two more plugs. One, the reappraisal doesn't necessarily raise your taxes. As a matter of fact, quite a yeah. few people's taxes will go down because the reappraisal changes the grand list. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Right. And the grand list determines what the tax rate yeah. is by how much money you need. Quite often, if you've done nothing to your home since last reappraisal, your property tax will probably either stay the same or go down. So that. As far as reappraisal causing your tax to go up, not true. Right. The other one is the, the town plan that she's talking about on the on the twentieth. That that's available on the town website if you'd like to read it. It's 173 pages, so be ready. There's a lot on there, a lot in there. I've got through three quarters of it. Uh, I'm supposed to be all the way through by tonight. I don't think I'll make it, but uh, it, these people have done a shitload of work about trying to make it so we can have housing, so we can have infrastructure, so we... It, anyway, yeah. they've made some adjustments in the town plan that so far look good. And we work closely with Two Rivers out of Quichi. Um, the folks down there have really helped us. Um, they're on a lot. He comes on either in person or to the Zoom meetings because they have a broader band respect. They know more of what's going on, so when trees or Rick, or any of us have a question, uh, Kevin Geiger can answer that question for us because he's been doing this for however long with all these other towns. So he can say, well, this town did this and it didn't quite make it, or this town did, oh my God, it did great. But they know what hasn't worked legally through the system that you can't push through. So yeah, it's been a long time coming and public comment is welcome. But definitely get your vote in for the water bill because we're going to pay for it one way or the other. We might as well pay for it with the bonds that we have. How old is the existing system? Oh, my God. It's 100 years. 100 long. years. Some of the stuff that they're Some taking out is, yeah. I think it's average 50 to 75, but we, have, we still have a lead issue with galvanized, which, which actually, if we do it now, right now, there's abatement for that. There's mm -hmm. some money for us free. Uh, Bernie Sanders, we've got, what, 600000 that we've got to match 150 to. It's going to do all of the road work. What's the, the other part? Hey, in my opinion, it, and I think our board believes that, that we cannot not do this. Are we going to be digging up Main Street again? No, no, oh, no, no, no. <laughs> That's good. No, Sand Hill will not be all repaved. Uh, <laughs> Sand Hill has new water lines going through there, and then that will be repaved, and for anybody that walks or drives up there, um, you might as well be driving on a dirt road. <laughs> for the summer. For the yeah. summer, yeah. Yeah, mm -hmm. there's a lot of work in that bill, so, you know, absentee ballot, however you have to do it, vote and vote on Just that bill it. while we have good funding that goes with it. So thank you for putting up. The, the only one I really appreciate, you, maybe if it passes, is in car inspections every other year. Yeah. Look what it costs you to just get your car inspected. A lot of people can't afford it. Do nope. you think it'll pass? Uh, I mean, so that was that was part of the transportation bill. Um, so that it's, it, uh, I, it might. I mean, yeah. so now it's over in the Senate. All right. So we'll see. We'll we'll see. see. Happy Happy we'll see. How do you two feel about line item veto? Um. I get sick and tired of seeing something at the bottom that exactly. everybody hates, but exactly. because I can live with it because I get right. this, this, and this, <laughs> and I'm going to hate it. Everybody hates it, but somebody, some one of you, yeah. your colleagues, yeah. this is what I want, so I'm, yeah. not, I'm going to hold you up until you pass. It, you know, it's not quite, it's not that sleazy. I, I, I think maybe it was in Vermont. No, in Vermont. In Vermont, in, in Vermont, in Vermont I, I will say, for example, that, that my I sang at Vince Luzzi's wedding. He's a Republican colleague, okay? I mean, we were friends. Uh, so it was in Biden and... 
What's his name from South Carolina? <laughs> yeah. I mean, the, the, um, but if it can't pass on its own merit, well, why can't you bring it up as its own bill? Why well, okay. In, in Vermont bills, <clears throat> provisions in Vermont bills are germane. In, in Congress, that's not necessarily true. You can have a transportation bill and suddenly have a, a hunting and fishing provision just stuck into it. We don't do that in Vermont. It, an amendment has to be germane. And someone can rise on the floor and suggest, well, no, if, if the committee passes it out, then, then that's the bill. But in committee, someone will say, well, that's not germane. That's not what this bill is about. I, I think generally it's, it's a matter of... Um, well, for example, the housing bill. And I mentioned there are things in the housing bill I don't like, but I thought this is as good as it's going to get, and the whole package now. Um, everything in that bill was about housing, one way or another. Okay, and... Um, but the bike path to get to the house, you mean? <laughs> I don't think there's a bike path. No, there's no bike path. And, okay. Uh, oh, okay. What is the question of what is germane to a certain extent there's a gray area. And if you want it to be germane, maybe you can make an argument. But then your colleagues have to buy the argument, or you're not going to get your way. I, I had one, but many years ago I had a provision I wanted considered on the floor. The committee of jurisdiction didn't like it. It never got to the, so I just kept at offering it as a floor amendment. But I got shot down every time. So. <laughs> All right. Thank you. Thank you. Oh, are we going to end with that? <laughs> I got shot down every time. <laughs> Thank you very, very much.